Hey y'all, I'm Nikki with Avery Lynn Creations and ALC Yarns, and today I am going to show you how to crochet one of my sunshine iced tea or coffee cozies. The sunshine cozy is such a fun pattern to make. Um, once you make one, you're going to want to make more and you're going to want to see it in all of the colors. It's really a very beginner friendly pattern. And in this video, I am going to walk you step by step how to make one. And if you also want to add the hand sleeve, I will show you how to make that and how I attach it. Um, and I will just show you, I've been binge making these. I haven't weaved in my ends. It's a thing. But I'm going to show you it in some other colors. This is, I love this cotton in the color Harvest. This is the same color as the one here on the cup. And it's also, I love this cotton in the color Brights. It is my favorite cotton color um, that they have. This is another, I love this cotton. And this is called, I think it's just called purple, blue, and green. But it's another favorite. And then this one is City Beats. So as you can see, it is pretty in all the colors. And if you make it in a solid color, you can really see the texture in this pattern. So let's just jump right in. In the next part of this video, I am going to show you how to crochet one. Hey y'all, I'm Nikki with Avery Lane Creations and ALC Yarns. And today I'm gonna show you how to make one of my sunshine iced coffee or tea cozies. So you're going to need some cotton yarn. I like to use, I love this cotton because they have some of the prettiest colorways. This is one of my favorites and it's called Brights. So you're going to need some cotton yarn and I have my crochet hook. This is a Furls Crochet Odyssey hook in the size H or five millimeter. You're gonna want two stitch markers and some scissors I keep my handy dandy little tin here full of like everything I could possibly need. To start out, you're just gonna need your cotton yarn and a size H hook. Let's dive in. You'll start out by making a magic circle. I like to have my yarn tail across my hand like that. And then I whip it around these three fingers and come across in the back and cross it. This is just how I like to make a magic circle or magic ring. It's just what works for my brain. And there we go. And now I chain one. Now you will work a herringbone half double crochet into the magic circle. So you'll yarn over, go into the circle, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then that very first loop, you're gonna pull through the first loop on your hook. And then yarn over and pull through both loops. Now you will single crochet. And do another herringbone half double crochet. And single crochet. You're just going to alternate that until you have six stitches. And single crochet. Count your stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then pull that to close the loop there. The pattern calls for you to slip stitch to your first herringbone half double crochet, but I prefer now to crochet in a continuous round. Like it just looks a lot neater, especially if you're going to be selling these. I just ignore that part of the pattern. Round two, you you're going to place two herringbone half double crochets in that first stitch. So if you're not sure where your first stitch is, just go back and count six. And that is where you're gonna place your two herringbone half double crochet. So yarn over, go in 
to that first stitch and herringbone half double crochet. And now you're gonna want to be sure to mark that very first stitch. And that will make life so much easier as you're counting your stitches. So I'm going to do that right now. Mark your very first stitch. And then you're going to place two single crochets in the next stitch. And that is the repeat for this round. So in the next stitch, you're going to do two herringbone half double crochets. And two single crochets in the next. And you're just gonna keep repeating that until you get to the very last stitch in this round. Okay, so now you should have 12 total stitches. And again, I am working in a continuous round, so I am not slip stitching after each round and chaining. I'm just going immediately into the next stitch. So round three, you're going to place two herringbone half double crochets in that first stitch that we have marked. So go ahead and remove your stitch marker and do your two herringbone half double crochets. Don't forget to go back and mark that very first stitch that you made. For me, it's so much easier to work two stitches and then go back and mark the first one. And that way, like I'm not, like this isn't in my way, but whatever is easier for you and that you will remember to do, um, that's, what, that's what I recommend. Now you're going to single crochet in the next stitch. So single crochet, and that's the repeat for this round. So two herringbone half double crochets, one single crochet in the next stitch. So just continue to repeat that until you get to the end of this round. At the end of round three, you should have 18 total stitches. And then we're gonna start round four. For round four, you're gonna do two herringbone half double crochets in the very first stitch. Mark that stitch real quick. And then you're going to single crochet in the next two stitches. And then two herringbone half double crochets in the next. So that's the repeat for this round, two herringbone half double crochets, and then a single crochet in the next two stitches. And you'll just repeat that until the end of the round. So what this is doing is getting the bottom of our cozy to be the right size to fit our cup. So we're just increasing until we get to a certain size and then we'll start the regular rows for the pattern.
So at the end of round four, you should have 24 stitches. Now round five, you're gonna do two herringbone half double crochets in the very first stitch. And you're gonna single crochet in the next three stitches. And that is the repeat for this round. So two herringbone half double crochets in one stitch. And then single crochet in the next three stitches. At the end of round five, you should have 30 stitches. And that is the end of the increase rounds for now. So what I like to do is just take the bottom of my cup and you usually only have one round kind of peeking out the bottom of your cup after the increase round, after round five. This cozy is designed to fit most 24 ounce cups. Um, it will also fit some 20 ounce cups. You just may have to adjust your height by doing fewer rounds. For round six, we are going to herringbone half double crochet in that first stitch. And in each stitch for this round. Don't forget to mark your first stitch. So go ahead and herringbone half double crochet in all 30 stitches in this round. I will meet you back at the end before starting round seven. All right, so at the end of round six, you should still have 30 stitches. Now we'll start round seven. You're gonna single crochet in that first stitch and single crochet in each stitch in this round. So go ahead and place a single crochet in each one of these stitches and I will meet you back before we start round eight. You should have 30 stitches after this round. And now we're going to start round eight. You're going to herringbone half double crochet in that first stitch, single crochet in the next stitch. If you're working in a continuous round like I am, don't forget to mark your first stitch in that round. And herringbone half double crochet in the next stitch and single crochet in the next. And that is the repeat for this round. You're going to herringbone half double crochet and then single crochet in the next stitch. So just keep repeating that. All right, at the end of round eight, you should have 30 stitches. And now we're gonna go to round nine going to herringbone half double crochet in that first stitch 
and you're going to herringbone half double crochet in the remaining stitches in this round. Continue working your herringbone half double crochet stitches and I will meet you back at the end of this round. All right, that is it for round nine. So round 10 is going to be a herringbone half double crochet in your first stitch. and a single crochet in your next stitch. Round 10 is really just a repeat of round eight. So you're gonna herringbone half double crochet in one stitch, a single crochet in the next. And you're just gonna repeat that all the way around All right, at the end of round 10, you should still have your 30 stitches. And then for round 11, you're going to single crochet in the first stitch and single crochet in each stitch in this round. Again, if you're working in a continuous round, don't forget to mark your first stitch. and just continue to work those single crochets all the way around. All right, that is it for round 11. Now we're gonna go to round 12, and it is a repeat of round eight, and that is herringbone half double crochet in your first stitch single crochet in the next stitch and just repeat that around herringbone half double crochet and single crochet All right, that is the end of round 12 and round 13. Herringbone half double crochet in the first stitch and herringbone half double crochet in each stitch in this round. So just keep putting those herringbone half double crochet stitches in each stitch in this round. After this round, we will have one more repeat round of round eight, and then things are gonna get just a little interesting for one round, and then we're gonna go back to repeating these rounds. We'll keep putting your herringbone half double crochet stitches in each stitch in this round and I will meet you back before we start round 14. All right, that is the end of round 13, which was just all herringbone half double crochets. Now we're gonna go to round 14. And again, this is a repeat round of round eight, which is herringbone half double crochet in your first stitch single crochet in the next herringbone half double crochet in the next and single crochet in the next and you just keep repeating that for all 30 stitches and then we will be moving on to round 15 which is an increase round. 
which means we will be adding stitches to that round. So we'll no longer have the 30 stitches. And I will show you how to do that next. So continue doing half double crochets in one stitch and single crochets in the next. And I will meet you back before we start round 15. All right, that is the end of round 14. And now we are going to round 15, which is an increase round. So you, so you're going to place two single crochets in your first stitch. Go ahead and mark that very first stitch. And now you're gonna single crochet in the next 14 stitches. So you're just gonna place one single crochet in the next 14 stitches. Okay, that was 14, go back and double check. All right, so now you will place two single crochets in that next stitch. Then single crochet in each of the next 14 stitches. And that will get us to the end of this round and we should have 32 stitches at the end of this round. So go ahead and finish up with the single crochets in the last of these stitches, and I will meet you back at the end of this round. All right, at the end of round 15, again, you should have 32 stitches. So be sure to count your stitches before you go to the next round. All right, round 16 is another repeat round of row eight, which is herringbone half double crocheting in the first stitch, single crochet in the next. Go ahead and mark the first stitch in your round and grab your other stitch marker. I'm gonna show you a trick. So I like to take my stitch marker and for each one of the increase rows going forward in the pattern, I mark that increase right here. I just kind of go through the front of one of those stitches. Now, if I wanna count my rounds, I don't have to go all the way back at round one and count up. I know that my first increase row is round 15. So then I can count up from here. It saves so much time because I really don't like counting my stitches or my rows, but I know it's gonna save me time later. So this is kind of my little hack for that. So continue doing the herringbone half double crochet and then single crochet. And you just repeat that all the way around for round 16 and you will have 32 stitches. So keep alternating those herringbone half double crochets and single crochets. And I will meet you back before we start round 17. All right, I am at the end of round 16 and you should have 32 stitches. So moving on to round 17, this is another increase round. So you're going to place two herringbone half double crochets in that very first stitch.
Don't forget to mark your first stitch. Then you're going to herringbone half double crochet in the next 15 stitches. And you will place two herringbone half double crochets in the next stitch. And herringbone half double crochet in the next 15 stitches to finish out round 17. Round 17 was an increase round, so you should have 34 stitches at the end of this round. Now we're going to round 18. Round 18 is a repeat round of round eight, so you're going to herringbone half double crochet in the first stitch, single crochet in the next, herringbone half double crochet in the next, and single crochet in the next. And you just keep repeating that all the way around. I just finished round 18. And if you remember that round 17 was an increase round, so I'm gonna move my stitch marker up from round 15 and I'm gonna come right through the front of that very first increase for round um, 17. And that is going to help us out when we get to the next increase round so we don't have to count all the way back from one. So we don't have to go all the way back to round one and count up. We know that this is round 17. So moving on to round 19, we are going to single crochet in the first stitch and single crochet in each stitch in this round. Don't forget to go back and mark your first stitch in this round and continue to single crochet. So go ahead and single crochet for each stitch in this round and I will meet you back before we start round 20. I just finished up round 19 and there should have been 34 single crochet stitches. So for round 20, this is another one of those repeat round eights and you're going to herringbone half double crochet in the first stitch and single crochet in the next. Herringbone half double crochet and single crochet and you're just going to repeat that all the way around until you have 34 stitches All right, I just finished round 20. And if you ever get confused on what round you're on, 
Remember, we marked round 17 here. So you can just count up from there. So there is 18, 19, and 20. So we just finished round 20. So round 21, this is going to be an all herringbone half double crochet round. So herringbone half double crochet in the first stitch. And in each stitch in this round, again, you want to make sure you go back and mark your first stitch if you're working in a continuous round like I am. But even when I'm not working in a continuous round, I still like to mark my first stitch in my round. It just makes it easier. It takes the guesswork out. I don't have to constantly be going back and counting my stitches. Plus, if you are a new crocheter, it get it helps you recognize what your beginning of round looks like too. So keep putting those herringbone half double crochets in each stitch and I will meet you back at the end. All right, that was the end of round 21. And now we're moving on to round 22, which is herringbone half double crochet in your first stitch and single crochet in your next stitch. And you just keep repeating that. After round eight of this pattern, every other row is this row where you herringbone half double crochet and then single crochet in the next stitch and you just alternate those stitches for the entire round. So keep alternating your herringbone half double crochet and single crochet stitches. After row eight in this pattern, every other round is going to be this round where you alternate herringbone half double crochet stitches and single crochet stitches. I just finished round 22. Round 23 is the last increase round for this pattern. So right here, we know that this is round 17 because it was our last increase. So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I always like to double check and make sure that I am on the correct round before I do an increase round. So 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So we are about to start round 23. And you're going to place two single crochets in that very first stitch. And mark the first single crochet that you made. And then you're going to single crochet in the next 16 stitches. I just worked my 16 single crochet stitches and make sure you double check and go back and make sure that you did do 16. 
and then you're going to place two single crochets in the next stitch. And then you're going to work one single crochet in the next 16 stitches to finish out this round. So at the end of this round, you should have a total of 36 stitches. I just finished up round 23. Go back and double check that you do have 36 stitches. And then we're gonna go on to round 24 where you're going to herringbone half double crochet in the first stitch and single crochet in the next. I always go back and mark that very first stitch then I work a few more stitches. So herringbone half double crochet in the next, single crochet in the next, and now I'm going to move up this stitch marker. I just like to kind of get away from there so it's not banging around as I'm trying to crochet. So I move up my stitch marker from the last increase row to mark this lat to mark this increase row right here which was round 23 and we're not going to increase after this round but we are going to do a total of 31 rounds for this pattern so it's so easy to know that this is round 23 and then count up from there so we know when we hit our last row um, I used to be so bad about making a short cozy. Like I was like, oh, I think I'm at the right round and I would end at round 27 instead of round 31. And I would just eyeball it because I was too lazy to go back and count. So this makes me double check every time and it's not such a pain to go back and count from row one. As you can see, I am kind of a lazy crocheter and I like to keep things as simple as possible. So that is why I use a ton of stitch markers. So back to round 24 where you are alternating herringbone half double crochets and single crochets all the way around. for a total of 36 stitches. So continue alternating those and I will meet you back before we go on to round 25. I just finished up round 24 and there are 36 stitches in that round. Now round 25 is an all herringbone half double crochet round. So herringbone half double crochet in your first stitch and do that for each stitch in this round. Don't forget to mark your very first stitch and continue working those herringbone half double crochet stitches. And again, this is round 25. So the rest of this pattern are just repeat rows, are just repeat rounds of rounds that we've already covered in this video. So if you are feeling brave and you just wanna work them by yourself, um, I will go over with you um, how to finish out the pattern. Round 25 is all herringbone half double crochet stitches. Then round 26 is where you alternate the herringbone half double crochet and single crochet stitches. And then for round 27, it's all single crochet stitches. Then round 28 is another repeat round of herringbone half double crochet in one stitch and single crochet in the next. Round 29 is all herringbone half double crochet stitches. Then round 30 is another alternating round where you do herringbone half double crochet and then single crochet. 
And the very last round, round 31, is all single crochet stitches. So if you feel comfortable, you could go ahead and move on with the pattern. But if you want to continue the video, I will continue um, to show you how to work the pattern. So again, we are on round 25 and we are just doing all herringbone half double crochets for all 36 stitches in this round. So go ahead and work those and I will meet you back before we start round 26. I just completed round 25 and I am moving on to round 26 which is a herringbone half double crochet and then a single crochet in the next. And you just keep alternating that herringbone half double, single crochet for each stitch in that round. Go ahead and keep alternating your herringbone half double crochet and single crochet stitches to complete round 26 and I will meet you back before we start round 27. I just finished round 26 and moving on to round 27. Round 27 is all single crochets, so single crochet in your first stitch, single crochet in your next stitch. Go ahead and mark that first stitch and work a single crochet in all 36 stitches in this round. All right, I just finished the last single crochet for round 27. Moving on to round 28. This is another herringbone half double crochet and single crochet round. So herringbone half double crochet in the first stitch, single crochet in the next. And herringbone half double in the next and single crochet in the next. Now, if you ever get in the zone and you're just like, I do not remember what round I'm on, I've just kind of been going along. Um, once you make a couple of these, you can easily memorize this pattern. Um, so again, that is why marking your last increase round comes in handy. So I know that this is round 23. Well, I can count up from there. So 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So I know that I'm on round 28. And that just helps me make sure I'm staying on track. I'm also really bad about counting my stitches after each round, but I do try to at least count my stitches after every other round. That way, if I make an error, I don't have to go too far back um, because nobody likes frogging. So if you're like me and you don't like counting stitches, at least try to count your stitches every other round. Um, you will thank yourself. Because as many of these as I have made, there's times where I just miss stitches. So keep alternating your herringbone half double crochet and your single crochet stitches until you get to the end of this round and then we only have three more rounds after that y'all the end is in sight round 29 is an all herringbone half double crochet round so go ahead and put a herringbone half double crochet in your first stitch and in the next stitch and then mark your first stitch 
and herringbone half double crochet all the way around and you should have 36 stitches at the end of this round which is round 29 and then we will have two more rounds after that so keep working those herringbone half double crochet stitches and I will meet you at the end of this round I just finished up round 29 and moving on to round 30, which is, I'm sure you can guess by now, herringbone half double crochet in the first stitch and single crochet in the next stitch. And herringbone half double crochet in the next and single crochet in the next and you just keep alternating that around and you will be happy to know that this is the last alternating herringbone half double crochet and single crochet round for this pattern so there's one more round after this so keep alternating your herringbone half double crochets and your single crochets and I will meet you at the end of this round before we start round 31. All right, I just finished round 30 and we are moving on to the very last round in this pattern, which is round 31 and it's all single crochets. So single crochet in the first stitch and in each stitch around and do a little happy dance because you are just about to finish your sunshine cozy. So keep placing those single crochets. And I'm going to show you how I like to fasten off because I feel like it gives it a little bit of a cleaner look. So keep doing your single crochets and I will meet you back at the end of round 31. All right, I just finished round 31. So now I'm going to take out my stitch marker and I like to slip stitch into this next stitch. So you're going to go into your stitch, grab some yarn, pull up a loop. Now I like to make these pretty loose, okay? So then you're gonna take that loop and pull it into the second loop on your hook there, okay? And then I do the same thing for the next stitch. I go into the next stitch and just slip stitch and I make it kind of loose and then I grab some yarn and I pull it through that loop and I leave a little bit of a tail there because you're going to weave that end in so go ahead and cut your yarn and then pull it the rest of the way through and give it a little tug And then when I weave that in, you won't really see it. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so there is your Sunshine Cozy. And if you like your Sunshine Cozy like that, that is perfect. Or if you want to add a sleeve to it, I will show you how to do that next. So I like to call it a sleeve because I like to slip my hand through there and hold it like that. I don't feel like it's sturdy enough to hold it like an actual handle for your cup. So I will show you how to make this sleeve next. Now we will make the sleeve for our Sunshine Cozy. Whenever you make your slip knot, you're gonna wanna have a longer tail than normal and go ahead and make your slip knot. And 
Now we are going to foundation single crochet 14. If you have never foundation single crocheted, I'm gonna show you how. So you're going to chain two, so one and two, and then you're gonna go into the first chain that you made. I pick up that loop there and I kind of swing around the back here and I get that loop here too. Sometimes you just have to get your fingers in there. Okay, and then I go all the way through there with my hook, grab some yarn, pull it through both those loops, and again, I go all the way through. This helps with your tension. You don't want a tight foundation um, single crochet chain. Then yarn over and pull through the first loop on your hook, yarn over and pull through the last two loops on your hook. And that is your first foundation single crochet. Now you're gonna turn your work and you're gonna look for the V there, right there. That's where we're gonna work into for the next one. So go into that right there and go through both loops, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through the first loop, yarn over and pull through the two loops on your hook. And you see how each time I'm making sure that I'm pushing my hook through the yarn there. I'm not just going like this and then grabbing yarn. It really helps with your tension. You want to have pretty loose tension. So then turn your work and look for the V. That's where we're going to go into for the next one. So go into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, You have two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the first one. Two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through both of those. So continue doing that until you have 14 stitches. And then we will move on to the next part. Okay, once you have your 14 stitches, go back and double check. 14. Now you'll chain one and turn your work. And you're going to a herringbone half double crochet in the first stitch. And single crochet in the next herringbone half double crochet in the next and single crochet in the next and you're just going to repeat that all the way down for this row Now you'll chain one, turn your work, and you'll single crochet in each stitch in this row. And there is your little sleeve. Now you're going to fasten off and leave about a six to eight inch tail. To me, the more the better because you just have some wiggle room there. Let's go ahead and fasten off. And then you wanna make sure that when you attach the sleeve, your herringbone half double crochets are facing out. So that's your herringbone half double crochet. See the little bump on the side? Right there. I just like the look of the textured stitch. So that's why you want that to be facing out whenever you attach your sleeve. 
um, here's what the back looks like. So you see it's not as pretty as the front with that little bump there. So now you're going to grab your Sunshine Cozy. And if you remember, this round here that we marked was round 23. Well, we are going to attach our sleeve to our cozy at rounds 12 and 27. So this is round 23. So 24, 25, 26, 27. So now you can take a stitch marker and you will mark round 27. 24, 25, 26, 27. I kind of want my sleeve right here, so that's why I'm moving it over here. So then this is round 23, and we can go back from there, or if you want to go down to round right here, see right here, that was an increase round, and you can see that's the herringbone half double crochet stitches, so we know that's round 17. And then right under it is round 15, 14, 13, 12. So then we know right here is round 12. So I'm gonna take this stitch marker out and I'm gonna mark round 12. So here's 15, 14, 13, 12. I like this spot for my sleeve because I feel like the weight of the cup and the liquid in your cup, it just helps balance it so much better. So I like to just go ahead and lay it out there. There is round 27 and there is round 12. Okay, then you're gonna wanna get a tapestry needle. I like the bent tip needle it just makes life so much easier. And go ahead and thread. I start at the top. I don't know why, it's just easier for me. Go ahead and thread your needle through. Find that row, make sure you're in the right row there. And then I go ahead and go through that very first stitch right there. And when I go through this row, I'm either going through like the middle of a stitch or I'll go through a stitch like that. I try to just go through the middle of the stitch because you don't wanna just go into one of these holes. You want it to be secure. So go through the middle of a stitch there. It's not always easy with a blunt tip, but you just make it work, okay? Make sure that you have a hand inside your coffee cozy so you're not grabbing this other side. You don't wanna attach it to the other side. You want your cup to be able to fit in there. And I cannot tell you how many times I would go open it up and I had grabbed some of the other side. Oh, so frustrating. So save yourself the frustration and make sure that you're not grabbing that other side. So give it a little tug, okay? And I just make sure I'm still lined up with that row there and I am. And then I'm gonna come right back through. I know this is kind of upside down, but I'm at a weird angle. And again, I wanna make sure I'm going through some stitches there. I don't wanna just go through a gap. I want it really secure. So, go through some stitches here. And as you can see, I got a little too high there. So I'm gonna come down here I'm gonna go through those stitches and I'm gonna pick up some stitches here. Go ahead and give it a little tug. All right, and then, let me see, so there's kind of a gap there, so I'm gonna kind of come down We'll get this when we come back through. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna go through some stitches. And again, I'm just checking every time to make sure I'm not like all lopsided here. 
I'm just continuing to line that back up and give it a little tug. Come back through the back side here and go through some stitches again. And I flip it around the front and make sure I'm going through stitches there. Give it a little tug. Coming around here on the edge. Again, I'm going through some stitches. See, look, I didn't grab that over there. Okay. So now I went through all of those, but I'm going to go back through because look, I've missed some of these up here. And I just want to make sure, especially on these edges here, that it's secure. So I'm going to come back through here. And I'm going to come out here and I'm going to pick up that corner right here. Now I'm going to come through here and I'm going to grab this stitch here and come through the back side. I like that a lot better. Now I'm coming back through the back and I'm going to come through and I'm going to grab that stitch here. And then I'm going to go through right here. So I'm just going right back through, but I'm making sure I'm getting anything that I missed. And this corner, I always want to make sure I get the corners too, so I'm kind of skipping over a little bit here. And I'm going to grab that corner. Now I'm going through right here. Now double check everything, kind of give it a little tug. Make sure there's nothing loose there. And check on that side, looks good. So I'm gonna come back through the front And then I'm going to take this stitch right here. I'm gonna go I'm gonna skim this stitch right here, just through that loop. I just want that to look a little bit better there. There, okay. So that's the top, looking good. Now I'm going, I'm going to leave my ends just because I want to make sure everything looks good before I start weaving in my ends. Now we're going to come down here. And you want to keep it flat, but kind of tight. You don't want to like pull it tight to where that's puckered up, okay? You want to keep it tight, but to where it's still flat. You're not tugging that up, okay? And as you can see, there is my round, and there's my round 12. So that's where we're attaching it to. So go ahead and thread the yarn through your needle. I'm gonna go in this stitch right here. Then I'm going to find the stitch that I want, make sure it's even with this. I'm going to go through the middle of it and I just kind of anchor it there. And then I get my hand in there because again, you don't want to go through the back side of your work. It's going to be easier to do this kind of flipped upside down here. And then you just kind of wiggle your fingers in there and you pull that, whoops, minus the stitch marker. And just kind of pull that through okay again i pull it and then i make sure i'm not puckering anything up here okay i know this is upside down but it's just so much easier to do this way so then grab your needle go back into your work here Find 
end your round. Just kind of got to feel around on the inside. And then I come up through the stitches there. Okay. Now we're going to do this one just a little bit differently than we did the other round. Okay. Because it's really hard to get through the inside. Put your hand on the inside. Make sure that you did not go through the other side. Okay. We didn't. So now what we're going to do is see the round that we're on. I'm going to grab some of these stitches like that. Make sure you can see what I'm doing, okay? Like that, and I'm gonna pull through here. And do the same thing with the next one. And the same thing with the next one. Give a little tug, put your hand on the inside, make sure you didn't pick up the outside there. Now I'm going to go, I like to go back through one more time, but I'm going to do it like I did the top. So I'm going to go in to the stitch, I'm going to pull through the inside. Go back inside here. And you're just gonna have to kind of feel around. You can tell at this point, you can tell when you're in a gap and when you're in stitches, cause it's not gonna be as easy. So stick that up through there. Give it a little tug. And then I'm going to, see I'm gonna see if any of these wiggle. I don't have any gaps right here. So I'm just gonna continue to go through here. So I'm just going to scoot on over here, push through, pull on the inside, and I'm coming through right there. Now I don't like this spot right here, so I'm going to go through that right there. I kind of got to wiggle your hook in there or wiggle your needle in there. there. And then I'm coming up through the inside one more time. Now check it. Looks pretty good. This is the spot that I just come out of. We're going to go down one more time. So that looks kind of bad, but we're going to fix that. And then flip it over. Make sure it looks good here. Looks good there. So I'm going to go into that spot one more time. In fact, I'm going to come around and I'm going to kind of skim right through here. And come up through there. Just kind of anchor it. You'll once you do this a couple times, you'll figure out a way that you like it. Basically, you just want to make sure that it's super secure. All right, and then once you feel like it's secure enough, go back down into the middle there. Turn it around. Make sure it looks okay looks good to me and then you can turn your cozy inside out and go ahead and weave all of your ends in including the one at the very bottom where you um, where you made your magic circle to begin the work don't forget to take your stitch markers off and there you have your sunshine cozy with your hand sleeve I hope that you enjoyed this video. You can find this free crochet pattern on my blog. I will link that down below in the description of this video. 
please feel free to comment if you have any questions at all. And until next time, happy crocheting. Now I'm gonna show you how I like to weave in this end right here where we fastened off. I like to get a sharp pointed needle and I flip it around the back here and I just come through right here. And I like to go through the yarn here, not just in between the stitches. Like I like to go through the fiber like that. Just push that down in there, give it a nice little gentle tug. Kind of work that a little bit. So you don't have an indention there. And then I work back that way again. Nice little tug. And then go to the side. Get a little tuck there. And then here you are. To me, it gives it a, a, a cleaner finish there. You still have a little bit of a dip there, but it's not quite as noticeable. So that is how I like to finish off right there. And then I just weave my other ends on the inside as normal.